Hi, I'm Ben from Motivation to Invest. Our mission is to help you invest for your financial freedom. Whether that means escaping the nine to five drudgery or just improving your quality of life. Whatever your goal, knowing how to make your money work for you rather than you working for your money is one of the traits that all successful people have in common. With stock prices at an all time low and talk of a possible recession, this is one of the greatest times alive to start investing. So in this video, I'm gonna outline my top five stocks which I've invested in during the coronavirus stock market crash. Let's dive in. As the great Warren Buffett says, be fearful while others are greedy and greedy while others are fearful. This is an ideal opportunity to heed those words of investing wisdom. Now before I get into the list, it must be said, the trick is not to just follow the exact businesses that I've invested in or that Warren Buffett's invested in, but the trick is to assess their strategy and learn their strategy in which they evaluated the businesses and the timing in which they invested in the companies. Because everyone's personal situation is different and everyone's investing goals are different. So know yourself, know the company, and then make your decision based on those factors. I'm gonna take you over my shoulder in this video and show you the exact way that I evaluate each company before I invest in them, using the same strategy which Warren Buffett uses. Despite me being a long-term investor, one of the stocks I invested in during this coronavirus stock market crash actually made me £1,000 in seven days. So I'm gonna show you exactly the company it was, the timing I invested in it, and if it's still a good buy now. Starting off at number five is Delta Airlines. Warren Buffett's investment firm, Berkshire Hathaway, invested $45.3 million into Delta Airlines as the stock market crashed due to the coronavirus epidemic. Now, although it's not ideal just to copy investors, Warren Buffett is one of the greatest stock pickers of all time. So it was definitely worth an evaluation independently. I reviewed various aspects of the business, looking at its balance sheet to ensure the business had great cash flow, low figures of debt, and was a market leading business to invest in. It ticked all the boxes. My only negative was that after Buffett's large investment, there was a rally in the stock price due to him being such a prominent figure. However, after it dropped even further and was significantly below its fair value. So I invested a portion of my funds in this stock. At the time of filming this video, the stock was still the same price as back in 2014. A great investment indeed, especially on the back of Donald Trump's airline announcement in which he pledged to apparently save the airlines. Now I wouldn't bet on anything that Donald Trump says, but it still adds some confidence into the stock. One of the key factors Warren Buffett looks for in all his investments is that they are trading below fair value. As you can see, even today, it's trading 45.1% below its fair value, with earnings forecast to grow 15.82% per year. Previously, earnings have grown 11.2% per year over the past three, five years. But you also need to look at the risks. So the company does have a high level of debt and there has been significant insider selling over the past three months. These are things to be aware of, which you should check up. So for example, as I scroll down here, this shows you the valuation. So from the calculations here, they have calculated that it's 46.5% undervalued, and that's on March 30th, 2020. Your PE ratio is 
the price of the stock relative to its earnings. So according to this figure here, it's good value based upon a PE ratio of four compared to the airline industry average of 4.1. And then there's a forecasted earnings growth of 15.8%. Obviously, once the coronavirus epidemic has blown over and there's no long-term impact, assuming that. This is another key factor to check up and it's financial position analysis. So it's the balance sheet of the company. So as you can see, it's got more liabilities than assets in the short term, which is not ideal because the more debt a company has, the more risky it is to invest in, especially during a recession. However, in the long term, you notice it's got more assets than liabilities. As a investment, that's very good because if the company has to go bankrupt and sell everything it has in the long term, it's got enough assets to cover its liabilities. And then this portion here would be split between all the investors. This is your balance sheet here. And as you can see, you've got your debt there, $10.8 billion and different liabilities. And then you've got 35.9 billion in physical assets. And I'm imagining that's planes and other equipment. Dividend yield, 5.45%. If we look at this insider trading section, it's clear to see that there has been a lot of shares bought and sold. Now, the risk is some people in companies tend to buy and sell shares to inflate or deflate the stock price. So what you need to do is analyze these figures. You can see that there's been $677,000 worth of shares sold in the past three months. However, there has been a lot more purchased, $49.2 million worth of shares, totaling 982,532 shares. This gives me a little bit more confidence in the company because the people in the company are actually buying back shares in the company. Two of them were bought by individuals, two of the transactions, and one of them was by a company. So this gives a large amount of confidence in the company. I'm, an, I'm imagining this one is probably Warren Buffett here, his Berkshire Hathaway. This was his transaction. So as you can see the transaction here, yeah, there you go. So 35 million, that was Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company and he purchased this amount of shares. He paid $47 a share. It's now less than $30 a share, so it's an even better deal um, than Warren Buffett got. And then there was also some shares purchased by an individual. So he purchased $46,000 worth of shares, and it's the same one here. So that's, that, that brings quite a bit of confidence before that, there was a, a few sell-offs, but that was when the share price was $60 a share. Berkshire Hathaway is one of the top shareholders. The Vanguard Group, which is one of the best investing firms in the entire world, they're a shareholder. Coming in at number four is the online holiday booking platform on the beach. The travel industry has took a major beating during this coronavirus epidemic due to the international travel bans put in place worldwide. But rather than investing in more risky cruise lines, such as Norwegian or Carnival, which have large numbers of staff, equipment, and higher levels of debt, I chose to invest in On The Beach, a lightweight online business with a forecasted earnings growth of 25% before the coronavirus crash. Historically, this business has offered a 42.7% annual earnings growth. Analyzing its details here, you can see it's trading at 51.7% below its fair value. I think when I purchased it, it was possibly closer to 65, 70% below its fair value. 
And then you can see the earnings forecast here at 25.05% per year. You've got to also look at the risks. So it says profit margins are lower than the previous year. So 11%, the previous year was 20.6%. That could be for a variety of reasons, um, but it's still a profitable company. So yeah, there's the valuation. So it's currently 51.7% undervalued, £2.35 a share. From the calculations here, it should be £4.87 as, as fair value. Its fair value is £4.87. Future growth, forecast future growth of 25%. So in the short term, it has more assets than liabilities. So if the company went bankrupt and had to liquidate and sell everything, it's got enough assets to cover its liabilities. And in the long term, it's got vastly more. So it's got six million pounds worth of liabilities in the long term and 92 million pounds worth of assets. That's very, very good coverage, which makes it a slightly more safer bet during a recession. There's not been any insider trading in the past up to nine months. So nine to 12 months ago, someone purchased 46,000 shares. They spent approximately 200,000 200, pounds, and that was three different people. Coming in at number three is Barclays, a large banking institute and well-known brand. It has an earnings forecast to grow at 15.57% per year and earnings grew by 54.1% over the past year. It's currently trading at 67.3% below its fair value. The only potential risk with this stock is the slightly high, high debt and the large number of insider transactions. So you can see here, Barclays share price is currently 97 pence a share, 63 67.3% undervalued. And from the calculations, it says it should have a fair value of £2.98. That's the forecast annual earnings growth, 15.6%. Obviously, before the crash, past performance, 47.5% annual earnings growth. That's very, very good. Looking at its financial position analysis, you can see this was the risk here. So it's got slightly more liabilities in the short term than its assets. So this gap here is the risk. But in the long term, you can see that it's got more assets than liabilities. So perhaps this is short, time, short term coverage for perhaps mortgage defaults, loan defaults. That's its debt here. It's currently got a 9.24% dividend yield, which is very, very good. This is another risk of this investment. So you can see over the past zero to three months, there's been a lot of different transactions. You've got 500,000 shares, 832,194 shares, which equals approximately 1.2 million pounds. Having analyzed this deeper, it's clear to see that there's been a lot more share buybacks, which is a good sign for the company. If these were all sell-offs, I would steer clear of the company, to be honest, because you'd assume that the people high up in the company know something that the general public doesn't. That's why they're selling all the shares. However, in this case, it's clear to see that there's been a lot of share buybacks, it shows that a lot of people have confidence in this business. So as you can see here, this is all buys. £49,000, £294,000, £346,000. So these are all purchases. So yeah, definitely a good investment if you want some exposure to the banking sector. And at number two on my list is Aviva. This is the largest general insurer and pensions provider in the UK. It also has a total of 33 million customers across 16 countries. In the best-selling book, One Up on Wall Street, 
The author mentions looking for boring companies, which can often be overlooked. What else is more boring than insurance? But what's not boring is its earnings growth, which grew over 64.8% over the past year. At the moment, it's trading at 72% below its fair value. Now, there are a couple of risks. So its earnings were forecast to decline by an average of minus 7.3% per year. So that's something to look at. But even at that rate, the past year's earnings growth were very, very high. If you, as you can see, it's valuation here. So the share price is currently £2.69 a share, which is 72% undervalued. Its fair value from the calculations should be approximately £9.59. So as you can see, if you invest now, you've definitely got a good chance of it rising just back to its fair value. So it's a PE ratio of 4.2 compared to the insurance industry average of 13.2. So there you go, past performance, 20% annual earnings growth. And here with the financial position analysis, it's got more assets than liabilities. Over the long term, slightly more liabilities. Obviously, it's an insurance provider. This could be to do with payouts. 11.51% dividend yield, which is very, very good. Number one on my list is Royal Dutch Shell, a behemoth of the oil and energy industry. The oil industry was hit hard during this coronavirus crash due to the drop in global demand and uncertainty in the stock market. During a recession, it's best to bet on companies which are large enough to withstand troubled times. Royal Dutch Shell is the third largest company in the world, with earnings forecast to grow at over 12% per year. It also pays a high and reliable dividend of 11.63%, and it's trading at 63.8% below its fair value. So as you can see here, its share price versus the fair value. So it's 63.8% undervalued. So it's £11.83 per a share and its fair value should be 35.48, £35.48. Future growth forecasted at 12.6%, past performance 27.9% annual earnings growth, which is also very, very good. Financial position analysis, you see it's got more assets than liabilities and vastly more assets than liabilities in the long term. Dividend, 11.63%. Insider trading here, there's been a lot more shares purchased than sold. So, £749,000 worth of shares were purchased and only £140,000 have been sold. So here, six, 16th of March, someone purchased £124,000 worth of shares. 10th of March, £139,000 worth of shares. Now, these people may be wrong, but it just gives slightly more faith in the business. However, as you can see here, the same person... So they sold off on the 10th, 140,000 worth of shares. The share price dropped to £12 a share. Then they purchased £124,000 worth of shares. So they managed to get the same amount of shares, 10,000 shares, but they'd made 30, no, they made £16,000 in six days just by selling off their share here and purchasing it again once it had dropped. The rest of these share buyback have all been share buybacks purchases, which is a good sign. I'll also show you the shell share price over a period of time. So as you can see here, I purchased it probably just about here on the drop. Now, if you look here, it says £1,000 a share. And that is a lower price than 2008. So if you look at the share in 2016 at its low point, it was 
351. Today, it's 1,279. So they say invest for the long term. If you invest now, it's you're getting the same price as someone who purchased it back in 2016. So you've saved yourself four years. That That's the logic I use to analyze the company amongst the other factors I've mentioned. But in terms of value, you're getting a good share purchase on this large, large company. Like this was 17th of January. So here, as you go January, so this was the coronavirus outbreak here. And then as you can see, the share price just plummeted. But if it can get back to this level, then that's very, very good. Just in this little blip here where it dropped down to here was when um, one of the investments I did had actually made um, 800 to 1,000 pounds in seven days in Royal Dutch Shell. So how can you get started? Well, many old investing firms used to have very, very high fees, which really do eat away at your profits. The new generation is all about free trading apps. Two of my favorites are Trading212 and Free Trade. These are great apps, free to use, very, very easy, very, very simple to use, and they also offer a free share on sign up using the link below. So what are you waiting for? It's, it's one of the greatest opportunities to invest at this time. For a one-stop diversified investment where you don't have to delve individually into each company, I would definitely look at index fund investing. I did a previous video on this you can check out. Index fund investing is widely regarded by many professional investors as one of the safest, most passive, and most productive investments you can do. They're very, very easy, very, very simple. I'm talking the FTSE 100, the FTSE 250, the S&P 500, these track the entire market. For example, the S&P 500 tracks the top 500 companies in the USA. So a simple investment into that fund will give you access to companies such as Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, these big giants, which are market industry. The previous video also details in more depth Warren Buffett's investment strategy which I follow. If you found this video inspiring or informative, feel free to like, comment, and definitely subscribe. Thanks for watching.